Isaiah chapter 61. We'll begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We bless your holy name. Thank you for the precious promises of the word of God. Thank you for the good singing we've enjoyed tonight. We are a blessed people, and Lord, you are our joy and our peace. You're our hope. You're our high tower. You are our buckler, our shield. And Lord, without you, we'd be in a mess. God, we thank you for the good testimonies of folks uh, uh, talking about how you've blessed their lives and touched their lives and impacted others. God, we just want to bless you for being a good God. Now, Father, help us tonight from the Scriptures. Lord, not only enlighten our minds, but uh, grow our faith. And God, help us, Lord, to ever draw nigh to God. Now, Father, do for us what we cannot do for ourselves and magnify yourself. And we'll thank you for it. For it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to several things from these verses. The first thing I want you to notice is the mandate. Isaiah says in verse number 1, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. We see the mandate didn't come from Isaiah, it came from the Lord. Uh, it was the Lord that called Isaiah. It was the Spirit of God that fell on Isaiah. It was the anointing of God on Isaiah that uh, took the Word of God to folks that needed to hear it. Uh, uh, the problem in today's economy, in the spiritual realm, uh, uh, there's a lot of folks trying to help God out. Uh, I've got good news for you. God don't need any of our help. Uh, and unless God does it, it's all in vain anyway. Uh, unless he touches our witness, uh, unless he touches our singing, uh, unless he touches our teaching and our preaching, uh, unless God shows up, my dear friends, nobody's going to get any help. We see the mandate. Uh, I want you to notice the ministering. Uh, Look at what Isaiah said his uh, ministry was. Uh, he was to minister unto this crowd. Look again at verse number 1. Uh, he said, He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Uh, I'm here to tell you for everyone that's got a broken heart, uh, God's got a balm of Gilead uh, uh, to soothe that heart uh, and to restore it and make it new again. Uh, he said to proclaim liberty to the captives. Uh, I've got good news for those that are bound by sin. Uh, uh, the, the, if the sun sets you free, you're free indeed. You can be liberated from your sins. And he said in the opening of the prison to them that are bound. There are a lot of folks there in the clutches of Satan. Satan owns them. He controls them. He wields them whichever direction he wants them to go. You and I, before we were saved, the God of this world is the one who dictated to us how we'd live. But hey, I've got good news. There's a way out of that prison. And his name is Jesus uh, and the blood of Christ cleanses us uh, from all sin. Uh, uh, look in verse number 3 we're talking about Isaiah's ministry. Uh, he said to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Uh, uh, for those that mourn, uh, I've got good news there's grace uh, uh, to help them in their grief. Uh, to give unto them beauty for ashes. Uh, uh, my dear friends, those uh, 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 in that day uh, that would be clothed in sackcloth and ashes uh, that were trying to get the attention of God uh, uh, for their broken spirit uh, that hideous sight uh, of the ash pile uh, 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 God's grace uh, brings beauty uh, and loveliness uh, and joy uh, and gladness to that sorrowful heart uh, and he goes on to say this uh, 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 the oil of joy for morning uh, I'm glad uh, uh, joy comes in the morning uh, and there is joy for morning uh, uh, when you're morning uh, uh, the good grace of God uh, and the Spirit of God can blow through your heart and turn your sadness to gladness. Uh, 
and then we find also uh, 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 what I quote a lot uh, the garment of praise uh, for the spirit of heaviness uh, if you'd ever learned uh, when you're down uh, when you're overloaded uh, when you think uh, that nobody cares uh, and you get an old song uh, and start singing praise unto God uh, or just start lifting up your voice and praising the Lord uh, and tell him you're thankful for his goodness uh, uh, tell him that he's altogether lovely uh, uh, tell him that you love him because he first loved you uh, and you start bragging on Jesus uh, and start singing unto Jesus uh, you'll find that heaviness lifted from you uh, and you'll find even though you started out under a juniper tree uh, now you're walking on the clouds uh, cause God is a good God uh, we see the mandate we see the ministry now look at Isaiah's message in verse 2 he said this is what I was to do I was to proclaim uh, the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. He said, I was to preach that the Lord's a coming. And I've got good news for you and I tonight. It don't matter who's in the White House. Doesn't matter who's in the State House. The Lord of glory's coming. And He's coming soon. And friends, He's going to pour out His wrath on this whole world. Those that persecuted the church. Those that persecuted Christians. Those that hated the things of God. They're going to face the wrath of God. And he says to preach, to comfort all that mourn. And I've got good news. Second Corinthians tells us in chapter 1 that God's the God of all comfort. No matter what you're facing... No, what you, no matter what your past had in it, uh, no matter what you're facing today, uh, or no matter how bleak tomorrow may look, God is well able to help you. Uh, we see His message. Now notice the manifestation, verse number 3. He said after He, he brought His message, after the mandate of the Spirit of God fallen on Him, uh, and after He ministered to folks... Uh, he said the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, here's the manifestation, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Now, if you look at all those folks he's ministering to, they're bound, they're held captive, they're mourning, they're grieving, uh, 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 they're in sackcloth and ashes. Uh, and he said, uh, I am called to go and preach to these folks that God will set down upon them uh, and change their lives and help them uh, so that everybody else around them says those that once were low, now they're trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. And then notice, if you will, the magnifying. In verse number 3, the last clause, that He, who? The Lord, might be glorified. Can I say... Everything that God does in our lives is for one purpose, that He gets the glory. Do you know that you and I were created for one purpose, and that's to bring honor and glory to God. And if we're not doing that, we're living below our privilege of being a Christian. We were made to bring glory. Do you know those songbirds that sing? You know what they're doing? They're glorifying God. Huh? Hey, the wolf that howls at the moon is glorifying God. Uh, the grass that grows is glorifying God. Uh, all creation is doing what it was designed to do to glorify God except man. And everything God does in our lives is for the sole purpose of Him getting the glory for our lives. I want to focus out of verse number 3. Right in the middle of that verse, it says that they might be called trees of righteousness and I'll preach with God's help on trees of righteousness trees of righteousness now he didn't say weeping willows there's a lot of God's people drooping around like weeping willows can I say something I hate those trees uh, can I say I don't know if you remember this Lynn Ann we had a big weeping willow in our backyard growing up I hated that tree because when I'd act up, which was often, my mom, instead of cutting switches, she'd cut them things and hit me with them things on the bare legs. I want to tell you something, them things wrap around your legs, they hurt. But I hate weeping willow trees. They're ugly. Huh? What? Did I hit a nerve here? Do, do you all love weeping willows? 
When we walk the dog, we got a neighbor up the street. He's got one. He lets it grow over the sidewalk. He never trims it. You got to fight through that thing like getting through cobwebs to go down the street. Huh? Miss Annette's threatened a couple times to cut the stupid thing down. Huh? I hate weeping willows. God didn't call you to be a weeping willow. Huh? Oh, I got it so bad. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. But it's so bad. That ain't what he called you to be. He didn't call you to be a weeping willow. Can I say this? He didn't call you to be a soft cherry tree. Cherry wood is beautiful, but it's very soft and hard to work with. We had a cherry tree in the backyard one time. We had a, just a little breeze come through and blew that thing over. Soft. Hmm? And God didn't call you to be soft. Now I know, modern day ecumenical Christianity. Oh, you've got to love everybody and be at peace with everybody. You can't offend anybody. Well, don't tell that to Jesus. He ran a bunch of them out of the temple with a whip. Nobody ever called you to be a welcome mat for people to wipe their feet off on. Uh, he did tell us to stand and stand there for. Uh, my dear friends, uh, he didn't call you to be soft. Too many soft Christians. Let me help you with this. Too many men that are soft Christians. Well, I don't want to offend anybody, preacher. Well, you're offending God. Mm. You don't want you to be a little sissy Christian. Let your yeas be yea and your nays be nay. Uh, little soft Christians. Well, preacher, I don't want anybody upset with me. Well, you're in the wrong business because if you live by that Bible, people are going to be upset with you. Matter of fact, read John 15. Jesus said the world hated him and the world would hate you. I'm not talking about being mean and nasty, but you do need to make a stand. You know why a lot of men can't make a stand? Because they don't get in that book. Because you get in that book, and then that book gets in you, you'll make a stand. Then calls us to be little soft cherry trees or weeping willows. Can I help you with this? He didn't call us to be sappy pine trees. Those things are nasty. You get around them things, you get all sticky and everything. There are some people, I don't even want to shake their hands because you get all sticky. They're sappy. Uh, Miss Ned hates pine trees. One time I was preaching revival somewhere, and we had a big one in the front yard. Kids used to say we had a Christmas tree in the front yard. We decorated every year. I come home from revival, it's gone. And I think your husband had part of that. It's gone. I'm coming down the street, I'm thinking, Where's the tree? Hmm? Gone. You don't want everyone to get on her bad side. You'll be gone. Huh? Can I say something about that stupid pine tree? It's still affecting my grass. See, all them roots underneath the ground pull all the nitrate out of the soil, and that hurts your grass. The trees, are, they're, 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 they're bigger than grass, so they're going to get the nitrate first. Them roots underneath that ground are still, I guess, grown. Because in that area where that pine tree was, I still have a hard time growing grass. Huh? He don't want you to be a sappy pine tree. Can I say this? He don't want you to be a dry, prickly cactus. Mm -mm. A lot of them sit around church pews. Don't approach me. Don't worry. Don't want to get stuck. Uh, you know what a cactus is? It's a prune what it is it isn't anything anybody desires huh so well, i got one out in a little jar am i well don't turn into one huh he called us to be a tree of righteousness hmm? i looked up that word righteousness this is what webster said about it, it says purity of heart and rectitude of life Conformity of heart and life to the divine law. You know when you're righteous? When your life backs up what this book says it should. Hmm? He goes on to say this, It is nearly equivalent to holiness, comprehending holy principles and affections of heart, and conformity of life to the divine law. It includes all we call justice, honesty, and virtue with holy affections. In short, it is true religion. I wonder, are we righteous? We're called to be trees of righteousness. Let me give you a few things, I'll be done. Can I say, first of all, trees of righteousness are planted by God. Look again in verse number 3. 
to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. I remind you that uh, Jesus gave a parable to his disciples uh, about uh, how a, a wicked man in the middle of the night uh, so tears among the wheat. Uh, and can I say, not everybody in God's garden did God plant there. Uh, uh, there are folks that sit in church houses. Uh, they say they're Christian, uh, but they do not belong by God. God did not plant them. Uh, uh, can I say uh, one thing about wheat and tares? Uh, they look identical. Uh, and the only time you can tell the difference uh, is at harvest time. Uh, and I'm here to tell you, friend, uh, when the trumpet blows, uh, there'll be some people uh, that sat on church pews with you that proclaim to be Christian but when Jesus comes and gathers up his jewels they'll not be taken they'll be left they'll be part of that crowd in Matthew 7 that said didn't we testify in your name didn't we preach in your name didn't we do many wonderful works in your name and he says depart from me ye that worked iniquity I never knew you listen to be a tree of righteousness you gotta be born again you gotta be part it in the church uh, uh, you got to realize uh, you were lost uh, and in an altar of repentance uh, and by faith you trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, as your Lord and Savior uh, you didn't turn over a new leaf uh, you didn't just decide to go to church one day uh, you just didn't sign a card uh, uh, making your name on the roll uh, it wasn't because you got baptized uh, or shook the hand of a preacher uh, it's because one day uh, through Holy Ghost conviction uh, you realize you was lost without God uh, and you put your faith and trust in the Lord uh, and he saved you and he changed you and he made a new creature out of you uh, listen uh, uh, trees of righteousness brother Ray uh, they quit the sinning business uh, and got into the righteous business uh, they put their faith in the Lord uh, and through his help uh, uh, they're not what they used to be uh, hey, he cleaned up their foul mouth uh, cleaned up their foul life uh, cleaned up all their uh, uh, dirty ways uh, and hey put them on a path called straight uh, on a highway called holy uh, and they set their affections on things above uh, and my dear friends God did a work in their lives uh, he planted them they just didn't sprout up because they chose to I'm here to tell you Billy Graham once said and I'm not a Billy Graham guy but I do agree with his statement he said of all the people that he preached to brother Bob and all the people in them crusades that came forward he said maybe 2% really got born again 2% can I say watching people's lives and listen to what people comes out of their mouth and seeing a lack of integrity and a lack of a desire for holiness and the things of God I'm here to tell you most people sitting in Baptist churches uh, that Harold once saved always saved uh, they're not going my dear friends because there's never been a change in their life mm. how can the Holy Ghost of God move into your life and you stay the same you can't mm. there's some folks I've never seen them worship I've never seen them broken I've never ever seen them excited about the things of God. You can't tell me they're going to heaven. Mm. You may not act like Dr. Phil back there, but something will change in your life. Mm. Uh, when God gets to moving, there'll be some tears somewhere along the line. There'll be some joy somewhere along the line. There'll be brokenness for sin in your life and sinners dying and going to hell. Uh, mm. Folks say they're saved. I wish you'd tell some of your faces as you're saved. Uh, saved people ought to be happy. I'm not going to hell. God's been good to me. Trees of righteousness are planted by God. Can I say secondly? Trees of righteousness point upward toward heaven. You know why trees grow tall? They're pointing towards heaven. And the trees of righteousness never point to themselves. They point toward heaven. Not I, but Christ that liveth in me. 
Huh? Are you listening? Trees of righteousness never take credit for anything. They give credit where credit is due. To God be the glory. Hmm? Trees of righteousness always make certain that folks know, by the grace of God, I am what I am. Huh? And they point towards heaven. Hmm? Well, you listen to some preachers today, it's all about me, 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 I, 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 I. Where's the Lord? Huh? You see some folks that saying it's all about their talent. Where's the Lord? Huh? Listen, I'm here to tell you, let me just say, last weekend, the Hensons and the Lancaster, I'd rather listen to them saying, and somebody's got a bus, and it dresses the same, got all the talent in the world. I mean, they're talented, but it's not about their talents and their notes and all. It's all about the Lord. Hey, young man Isaac, if you can't see the joy of the Lord in him, there's something wrong with you, huh? Huh? I just soon just hear them folks be around them folks because they're real. Hmm? Uh, trees of righteousness always want folks to see Jesus in them. Can I say something else about trees of righteousness? Trees of righteousness can't help but produce fruit. Oak trees produce acorns. Apple trees produce apples. Orange trees produce oranges. Cherry trees produce, produce cherries. And so on and so forth. Uh, palm trees produce coconuts. They all produce some kind of leaf. I like Brother Daniel's message. Leaves with no fruit. And I'm here to tell you, Trees of righteousness can't help but produce fruit. This is what Jesus said in John 15. I think Jesus would know, wouldn't you? I think he's the authority. This is what he said. In John 15, 5, he said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Didn't say he might bring forth fruit. Didn't say if there wasn't a drought he'd bring forth fruit said, he, he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Verse 8, he says this, Herein is my Father glorified. Didn't I not say that's what we're supposed to do, glorify God? Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Hmm? Verse 16, he said, You've not chosen me, but I've chosen you, and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give it, to you, give it to you. Listen, those that are planted by God, trees of righteousness can't help but produce fruit. Somewhere along the line, there's going to be fruit. If you don't have any fruit, and you don't have any root, something wrong. Either you don't belong to him or you got so much sin in your life you can't produce fruit. Either way, he's not pleased. But trees of righteousness can't help but produce fruit. Mm, can't help it. Mm, just wake up and live for Jesus. Boom! Fruit starts prop, prop, you know, producing out of your life. Mm. As a matter of fact, at one point Jesus said some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Don't matter if it's 30, 60, 100. You just produce fruit. Hmm? Can I say something else about trees of righteousness? They don't look around and see what other fruit other trees are producing. Again, they're pointing towards heaven. Hmm? Let me say this about trees of righteousness. Huh? They face enormous pressure. Hmm? You ever think about how much pressure a tree faces? Hmm? They have winds of adversity. Tell you something, if you live for Jesus, you're going to face adversity. Winds of adversity is going to blow against you. Hmm? Hmm? It's not going to be Joe Osteen every day's Friday and everything's smooth sailing. Huh? The devil didn't bother you when he owned you. But when you became a child of God, he does everything he can to destroy you so you don't lead anybody else to God. They face winds of adversity. And can I say this? They face storms that rage. Hmm? You ever wonder why when you're all tucked in your nice little house 
Well, what a tree's facing outside when the storms are raging. And Miss Nett loves thunderstorms. She loves watching thunderstorms. You ever watch trees in a thunderstorm? No? Man, sometimes I've seen trees bend so much you think they're going to break. You know why trees of righteousness don't break? Who they're anchored into. Hmm? Uh, they may bend and they may bow over, but they don't break. Hmm? Did you ever think about this? How about the lightning strikes of fury? I'm here to tell you, sometimes lightning strikes are, are far worse than the thunder and the rain and the wind. That lightning starts cracking and flashing. You can always tell uh, that a storm is moving away if you count a lightning strike and then how long it takes for thunder to hit. 1,001, 1,002... And lightning strikes, you hear the thunder. And then the next time lightning strikes, count again. If it's longer than the first time, it's starting to move away. That's a little bit of information there I'm going to give you on the Weatherman channel. Huh? You ever see what lightning can do to a tree? Hmm? I've seen lightning strike a tree and kill a horse underneath it. Hmm? Did, you ever, did you ever just imagine the intense electricity that hits that tree. Hmm? Can I say? Sometimes uh, the devil throws some lightning bolts your way. Hmm? They're never intended for you to say, Hallelujah, what a blessing. But when it hits and oh, you're still standing, you know what you can do? Hallelujah, what a blessing, I'm still standing. Huh? Do you ever think about Trees facing droughts of dryness. You know, we've not had much rain in the last month. In our neighborhood, some of the trees' leaves are falling already. You know why? Because they're dry. First, they start losing leaves. Then they'll start losing branches. They get too dry, the tree can fall over. Can I say? Dryness is the enemy of it tree of righteousness you know why you need camp meeting you know why you need Wednesday night service you know why you need Sunday school you know why you need all these things so you don't get dry so a preacher I can worship at the lake no you can't because God ordained for the church to assemble together hmm? if you wasn't here tonight you wouldn't have got the blessing of hearing and voting and agreeing to send brother JD that money that's a blessing Lord willing, Sunday morning, one of our favorite missionaries will be here. Brother Rom's going to be here Sunday morning. He's got his wife with him. That would be a real blessing. Huh? You can share Guyana stories, the plane and all that. He's got a church just a few miles from that compound. Yeah. What a blessing. Trees of righteousness face enormous pressure. How about forest fires of devastation? The devil's got fiery darts he wants to throw at you. Hmm. Do you ever see the thousands of acres that get burned up every year by forest fires? And usually they're started by somebody's neglect. You know what will cause you to burn down? Your neglect. Just stop praying. Just stop reading your Bible. Just stop uh, following the Lord and just see how long it takes for your tree to fall. Hmm? Trees of righteousness face enormous pressure. The Bible says we're written epistles known and read of all men. Do you know by your testimony you come to church and you live for Jesus and you love Jesus, you know people are watching you? That's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of pressure not to blow your testimony in front of them. That's pressure. Hmm? Hmm? How do you think Christian feels? Everybody he works with knows his daddy's the preacher. I don't know if you know this or not, but not all co cops have good mouths or good morals. Hmm. I wonder how many of them sit back and watch and say, yeah, let's see how long before Foster starts acting like we act. Can you imagine the pressure on him? Hmm. Same pressure you got on the job. They know you go to church. You've only been there 35 years or however long, huh? You know, how come you don't glow? I mean, you've x-rayed enough people, you ought to be glowing in the night. We can take pictures of you and sell it as a UFO. We can make a lot of money. Let's work on that, all right? Got our own Roswell right here. Well, 
Same thing with you, IRS. A lot of seedy people work there, trust me. Yeah, a lot of pressure. Hmm? Hmm. How about a teacher? Huh. We know teachers are all conservative and fundamental and, yeah, hmm. a lot of pressure. Knowing you're a Christian, you come to church, a lot of pressure. Nobody cares about you. You're in such a big plant. Nobody cares about you over there, GE. It's just a number, huh? Huh? What about these kids? He's getting ready to go to college. Huh? At the Us University of Loserville. I mean, Louisville. Hmm? Huh? What do you think it's going to be like first day roommate sees that Bible sitting there in his dorm? Whether or not you know this, a lot of people go to college to party. Hmm? Shocker, Bob. I know. Hmm? It's hard to believe. Huh? How about the stinking welder? A lot of pressure. They try to trip you up on purpose. Yeah. A lot of pressure. People watching you. Huh? Family members, friends, co-workers, neighbors. You know, your neighbors know every time you pull out, go to church. They're watching. They know. Hmm? Got a neighbor across the street. One day his son got, got there early on Sunday. I went out to get the car, truck. Or, it might have been the car back then. I don't remember. He said, hey, preacher, what's the sermon on today? So I told him. Figured I might as well preach to him there for a minute. They know. They're watching. Hmm? Enormous pressure. But let me leave you with this. Trees of righteousness are a thorn to the perverse. Every day you bring glory to God, you're a black eye to Satan. Every day you bring glory to God, that crowd is trying to trip you up on the job, you're a thorn to them. Every day you, you come in on Monday whistling, having a good time, they still got a hangover, you're a thorn to them. Hmm? Everybody that tries to convince himself it's not real, you're a thorn to them. <laughs> Your brother-in-law used a thorn to him. Now he understands. Hmm? Hey, I'm telling you, those who are not right with God, you're a thorn to. Can I say, when you come in here, there's somebody who's been here, be backslid, one foot out the door, Mary, you stand up, praise God. Boy, it's a thorn to them. It's a thorn to them. They want you to be just like them because every day you come in here fired up for Jesus, you're an indictment against them. Hmm? You're a thorn to the perverse. So what are you saying, preacher? Be a tree of righteousness. Be a tree whose life and heart seeks after holiness, purity, justice, and the glory of God. Be a life that longs to line up with divine law. You know, we're going to be judged by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Shouldn't we live by it? Be a tree of righteousness. Make a difference. Some of you tonight come in, walking on your lower lip. You come in with the blues. You come in thinking, oh, it's tough being a Christian. We're only going to heaven. Our sins have only been forgiven. I mean, God only daily loads us with benefits. Every day, He's faithful to put breath in your body. Huh? Give you strength to get down the road. Huh? Put food on your table. Huh? Brother Clint saying, I'm blessed. And you all sitting there like... What if God cuts the blessings off? I don't know if you've heard this or not, but they're pushing to put the face diapers back on us, and they're pushing to everybody got to have a vaccine. How can, you got to have a vaccine passport to go to a restaurant, but you don't need an ID to vote. Mm. Yeah. And this new Delta variant is so bad, it's so bad they don't even have a test to tell you if it's different than the other one because there is no such thing. They're lying to you. They're putting you back under fear because they're under pressure right now. I want to tell you something. If it was that bad and we had to put the face diapers back on, and they have to shut everything back down, how come they're not shutting the border down? 
How come they've let 700,000 immigrants into our country in the last five months, and as soon as they get across the border, they're putting them on buses and planes and taking them all over the country and dropping them off? They're not testing them. Are they really worried about this, this pandemic? No, it's all about controlling you and making you do what they say because it's all headed to the Antichrist. That's where it's all headed. But you can be a nice little sheep and do everything they say. Huh? You can let them jab you with that vaccine that's not been approved by the FDA because the CDC uh, says that you've got to have it. Listen, by the way, nobody at the CDC has ever been elected. Hmm? Can I help you with something? Even the Nazis were elected in Germany. Hmm? But you can listen to Fauci and Biden. Biden don't even know what he's saying. If you listen to him, you're nuts. You're nuttier than he is. You can listen to all that junk you want to. And you can keep your bowels in an uproar all you want to. Or you can just make up your mind and go live for Jesus and trust Jesus. Because if we're not going to be trees of righteousness, God's got a way of chastising us. And it might be put under control by a government. You say, God would never do that. Oh, go look at the dark ages. Hmm? Go and see where about 10 million Christians were slaughtered for their faith. Hmm? I'm telling you, I want the hand of God on my life. And it starts with us seeking to glorify Him. I wonder, are you a tree of righteousness? You see, you can't answer that. Only God can answer that for you. So the best way to find out is say, Lord, am I a tree of righteousness? Or am I a selfish tree? Or have I even been planted at all? The Bible says, let a man examine himself whether he be in the faith. It might be a good question for you to ask God, God, am I saved? And if he says yes, then say, God, am I a tree of righteousness? And then whatever he says, you ought to either be thankful or you ought to say, I'm sorry, Lord. Help me to become one. My dear friends, when the trees of righteousness are planted by God, He gets glory. Not only from our lives, but from the rest of the world who says, look at what He's done for them. My dear friends, let's be trees of righteousness. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. While he comes and gets a song, let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the scriptures. Thank you for those wonderful, powerful three verses. Lord, thank you for how you used Isaiah to impact Israel. God, use our lives to impact America. Lord, may it start on the job or in our neighborhoods or even in our homes. Help us to be trees of righteousness. God, I pray if there's anybody here tonight that's not been planted by God, never been born again, I pray you'd reveal that to them, that we might see them saved. I pray for every child of God, that God, you'd put your hand upon them, that they might be great trees of righteousness, that their life would glorify you, that, Lord, others would see your hand upon them, and they too trust in Christ as Lord and Savior. Now, bless in this invitation. Speak to hearts. Lord, help us all to be thankful for your blessings. Help us, Lord, to live in accordance to the Word of God that you would be glorified. Have your way now. Speak to hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.